This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome. Today we're doing a studio tour. This is a space that I have in my new apartment that I've been using for all kinds of things. And I heavily debated whether I wanted to make this video now or later, because I feel like there's always things that I'll be improving on this space, but I've decided that I should just do it. I think this space will be a big part of the channel going forward. And I think it'll be super cool to see it develop a little bit as well. So this is a room in my apartment here that I'm using for three things mainly. The first is it's an editing space. It's also a filming space. And then finally, it's also my dark room. So it's actually really small. It might look big, but Marty's using some crazy wide angle lens. I think this is like a hundred square feet. I might be wrong about that, but yeah, it's used for mainly those three things. And I think I've got it set up to a point where I like it so far, so I'm going to show you around today, show you how I kind of use this space, and also just show you some of the cool stuff that's in here, like how I organize my film, some photo books, some darkroom equipment, so should be a fun video. Alright, so uh, this room is actually really weirdly laid out and when I first got this space I got just a generic desk from Ikea and because of the big windows and that random door and this door it was really hard to actually get enough like tabletop space with anything that I could find pre-made so I decided that I was gonna buy just like a cheap Home Depot wood saw and a lot of plywood and I built the furniture in here which it's not perfect. This was literally my first time trying anything like this, but I think for my first time trying, it didn't turn out too bad. And just the fact that I was able to make custom sized tables that actually fit the space in a custom way has worked really nice. It's better than anything I could find pre-made. So this is the main table and this is the dark room table. This one is actually, the surface of this is, a full sheet of plywood, so eight feet by four feet, which I think is kind of cool. And then in each of these tables, there's shelves here to just store a bunch of crap like video equipment, darkroom equipment, paper, gear. Um, yeah, and then if you come on this side, this side of the table is totally open. So this is the area that I use as a desk. I can sit under here edit photos, videos. This is where I do all my editing. And then there's also storage under here for film and things like that. So it's been working really well for me. I really enjoy the fact that I can also just say that this is a custom thing, which I think is way cooler than anything you could buy. So yeah, um, this gets used for obviously editing and then also filming. I have like an overhead rig that I can use, use this wood grain as a nice backdrop or put some seamless paper on here. That's the idea. Anyway, um, it's been working really well so far and it hasn't broken. So the room isn't very big. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of the stuff that's in it as well. So we actually have a full video here, but this is my editing computer. It is, uh, 2019, 2020 iMac, it's not the new one. They just came out with those really cool ones. And of course I just bought this thing, but it works. It worked really well for me for video editing when I was filming on my Sony and stuff. But ever since I've started working with Marty and we've started shooting raw, this thing kind of lags behind. So I might need to change that soon. People also always ask me if I'm a gamer, I guess, because of this keyboard and mouse. And I haven't played a video game in like probably six years, but I just like the lights, honestly. I'm, I do want something wireless now. I hate the wires. Um, headphones, these are Audio-Technica. They sound really good and they weren't too expensive, I think, for how good they sound. They're also really comfortable and 
I can edit with these all day. Um, I had some beats that would like hurt my ears before and these I can wear all day. No problem. Um, chair situation is not ideal right now. This is ruining my posture. It's just a cheap Ikea stool, but I really need something a little bit lower, I think. Nobody cares about my chair. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Um, these are my photo books. The shelf looks more crooked, I think, on video than it does in real life. I think it's going to hold up well. I put it in the studs. This is pretty heavy, though, so I think it has to bow at least a little bit, but... Yeah, so far it hasn't come down. I color coordinated these. I stole that from my friend Arno. That's not my idea, but it does look really cool. So thank you, Arno. Up here I have pretty much the only cameras I own right now. I'll give you a mini camera collection tour. My two RZ67s, they're both broken. Um, so I currently don't have a working RZ. Yashica T4, this thing is uh, a trooper. That still works. Contax RTS, that's my newest camera. I haven't even talked about that one, um, but I will in the future. And then the Bessa T, which I just posted a video about pretty recently. Oh, and the Mamiya 7s right there. Because I use that one too much, so I don't end up putting it back on the shelf. Let's see, ooh, this is cool. I haven't talked about this much yet on the channel, but this has been a project that I've been working on for the past year. It's my first hardcover photo book. As you can see, it's called On the Sunny Side of the Street. It's like three or four years worth of landscape photos. And this is just a dummy mock-up, so it's not perfect. It's not even the final color, but this is on the press in Sweden right now. It should be out like end of August, maybe. And I'm very excited about this. I've been super quiet about it because I really wanted to make something that was true to myself, that was very personal. And because of that, I didn't want to be sharing everything about it on YouTube the whole time. Yeah, like I said, this is landscape photos from the past three, four years. And I'm so excited to share more about this, but I've already said too much. So that's going back on the shelf. Uh... Let's see, what else do we have? I have some prints up there, also like test prints from that book, which actually that could be sick to show you. Yeah, this is awesome. So that's a bunch of test prints up there. It's for other projects too, but check this out. So this is what I get from my printer for the book. It's just like every image in the book printed on the correct paper, the correct printing process. So this is how you get an idea of what your photos are going to look like before you actually commit to printing a ton of them. So this is half. There's more sheets here because there's a lot more photos in the book, but that's pretty cool. That can go back up there. This is my big wooden lighter for fire starting purposes, obviously. Um, just a bunch of random crap up there. Oh, actually, this thing is pretty sick. Oh, this is a Panasonic VHS camera. Um, it shoots real VHS tapes. It looks super weird and retro. I just haven't figured out how to get the footage off of this thing yet, so I'll work on that, but this will definitely be cool to make a video about. Put that there for now. Let's go to the other side. This is a book I haven't gotten to talk about. This is Friend of Mine by a friend of mine, Matt Day. Um, honestly, out of all the books on here, the books that I get most inspired by are from people that I know. Seeing my friends do cool things like this is very cool. So super honored to have a copy of that. Man, I am just rambling. <laughs> Cool, let's talk about some darkroom stuff. This is the darkroom side of the room. Um, got this nice light up here. These are my favorite light diffusion balls, whatever you call them. You can get them with Ikea bulbs, have this little remote for it. You can even adjust like color temperature for filming so I can make it warmer in the background, which is really nice. Um, 
Yeah, that's really sick. So when I found out that Ikea was running out of those, I started hoarding them because I love them so much. I have like three of them in my bedroom and I want to put some more up literally everywhere. So they're like five bucks and it looks, yeah, I think they look great. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? Darkroom stuff. Um, this is the darkroom table. I built this one before this one and this is in much uglier wood. So I will probably end up rebuilding this at some point. I have two enlargers. One is a Bessler, one is a Minolta. Um, I actually have a second one of these because I don't like this one too much. Um, the color filtration on it is just really weird. Uh, and it's really nice to have two enlargers because I can work a lot quicker. Like I can be printing two negatives at once. I can make a print on this one. And while this print is processing, I can come over to this one and make a print of the other negative. So that's pretty efficient. It kind of kills the downtime that you have in the darkroom when you're processing paper. And then let's go in here, which is, this is extremely messy. I forgot to clean this up. I just realized when Marty got here, but this is where I do the processing. It's a Fujimoto. I've had it for probably a little over a year right now and it's been working really well for me. I put this shelf up. The reason I put it in this closet is because there's really strong fumes that come off of this thing when you're using it. So I really wanted ventilation in here. So I don't know if you can see this, but up in here is a fan that vents to my attic. So that's meant for like a conference room. So it sucks a ton of air. And it's also really quiet and that just makes sure that I don't die. Um, I wired it in here. I thought this was a great idea putting this big thing of water next to the breaker board, but I wired it in so that when you hit the light switch, it turns on and yeah, it's really powerful and works great. Don't show this video to my landlord. That's that there's, there's like film chemicals and stuff down there, but I don't think you need to see that close that this is pretty cool i found these at a thrift store uh this i thought this was a paper box and then i saw that it says film so i'm assuming this used to be sheet film in this size like i don't even know if this is 20 by 24 or something it doesn't say that's weird actually i have no clue what it is i have no clue what this is i'm talking out of my ass but i just thought the boxes look cool um, let's see. There's a bunch of cool stuff down here. I've got like film developing stuff. This thing is sick. This is an aperture spotlight mount. I used to use this for photography. You can put this on any aperture light and sort of shape the light. I use this with the young MA shoot and it worked really well. I've also used this on other shoots in the past. Um, yeah, it works really nice. You can put shapes of light or whatever you want. Hmm, this is cool. This is a unbound copy of my photo book. And I think I'll be doing a video on actually binding and making a hardcover photo book by hand. So that should be fun. This is just where I keep like camera stuff that I need quick access to like lenses and stuff. I don't really like having them too organized. I like just having a spot where I can throw everything and work a little bit quicker. I have my Epson V600 here. This is the bane of my existence. I used to use this for film scanning. Now I just use it for print scanning and it works really well for that actually. So that gets to stay. Let's talk about uh, film organizing. I think that's kind of cool. I have a whole drawer system over here. I've got this nice filing cabinet over here. And this is where I keep all of my film organized by either project or location. So at a glance, I can very easily find like a specific set of photos from Belgium or let's see, I have a whole set of road trip photos. Honestly, anything I've ever shot that I think is of value is categorized in here. So like, for example, my young MA shoot, all of a sudden, if I want those negatives to print or do whatever with, they're super easy to find. For organizing 
contact prints. I have these boxes right here. Okay, these boxes, if you find boxes like this that look like paper boxes, please keep them because these come from print file. I think print file makes these boxes and they are $18 a piece. So if you find paper boxes, anything like that, keep them because they're probably a lot of money. So if I wanna find, for example, my contact sheets from Bombay Beach, there's also negatives in here. And just like that, I can flip through pretty much any contact sheet I've made from like any work in Bombay Beach. It's organized by location and this is obviously all more recent work. The reason the negatives are in here and not in the cabinet is because I still need to make full prints of all of the stuff that's in these boxes. So I have a lot of printing to do. Down here we have some book binding equipment. I've been learning to bind my own photo books and that's been really fun. Um, this drawer is amazing. This drawer is full of zines and letters that people sent to my P.O. box, like just all incredibly kind things. I don't have this P.O. box in New York anymore. I should probably set up a new one, but people would just send in their zines and I got to see some really cool work this way. So I'm incredibly grateful that anyone would even consider sending me something like this. Um, yeah, keep those there. Those will be cherished forever. One of the biggest challenges with setting up the dark room was these giant windows because for color printing especially, it needs to be pitch black. So I have essentially built these custom pieces of wood. I'm not gonna do it now, but they fit perfectly inside the windows. There's also a vent down here so that air can actually circulate through this room. And the fabric on here is called duvetine. Marty was kind enough to give that to me. And that just also helps another little layer of light proofness. Oh yeah, and on the door here, you might have noticed this. It's super ugly, but it works really well. It's just these seals that essentially stop light from coming through the door. It's also nice because it stops the sound from going through because I can, so I can talk in here all day and Allison doesn't have to deal with hearing me talk to the camera. So that's pretty much the space. I hope you enjoyed the tour. This will definitely develop um, over the course of the next couple couple years. I don't know what I'll be doing in a couple years, but this will definitely develop over the course of the next few months on the channel. And I think I'll document things that I end up building here or adding to the space. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you to Marty behind the camera for filming this on his very cool gimbal rig. And uh, finally, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for over three years at this point, and they've made it so incredibly easy to get a website up and running with my photography. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14-day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com Willem for temporary off your first purchase of a website or a domain.